Good morning. Happy Easter. My name is Stephanie Acklin, and I am the commentator. For Christians, Easter is the greatest feast of all. This is the day Jesus conquered death for us. And if Jesus is victorious over death and evil, he can also help us with our own pain, our own losses, and our own sufferings. And Jesus suffered and died not for his own self-glorification, but he did it because he cares for us. We are precious to him. With gratitude, let us gather this day to pray. The celebrant for this Mass is Father Daniel Nascimento. Please stand for our opening song. Number 172, Jesus Christ is risen today. we gather in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit the Lord be with you so as we gather this day on Easter Sunday we're grateful that the Lord has conquered death for us that the Lord has saved us from our sins and we recognize we still are a people in need of God's mercy and help we struggle we're not perfect we do and say things that hurt one another. So we begin acknowledging our faults and asking the good Lord for the pardon and the help that we need.
Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, who on this day, through your only begotten Son, have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity, grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may, through the renewal brought by your Spirit, rise up in the light of life. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea. Beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good, and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as judge of the living and the dead. 
To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Give thanks to the Lord for He is good. Mercy endures forever. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. The right hand of the Lord struck with power the right hand of the Lord is exalted I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord this is the day the Lord has made let us rejoice and be glad The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colosseans. Brothers and sisters, if you were raised of Christ, seek what is above, where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. Think of what is above, not of what is on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, your life, appears, then you too will appear with him in glory. The word of the Lord. Christians to the Paschal Victim, offer your thankful praises, a land the sheep redeems, Christ who only is sinless, reconciles sinners to the Father. The prince. 
angels attesting, the shrouded napkin resting. Yes, Christ, my hope is arisen. To Galilee he goes before you. Christ indeed from death is risen, our new life obtaining. Have mercy, Victor King, ever The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the, the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head but not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first. And he saw and believed, for they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. I read a story about uh, an inmate by the name of Mark. Mark was in prison, and as he was lying on, a, on his bed one night, he was thinking to himself, why did God create me? Why did God create me? Why did God create someone who would end up his life in prison? There's a prison chaplain by the name of Pastor Sean DeMars. He, he goes to prison regularly. He does Bible study. He tries to help answer these questions that inmates may, may have. And he said he likes to use the creation story, the book from Genesis, begin with that, because he wants to show them the effects of sin, how sin can have such a destructive influence in our lives. And he says, 
you know, most of the inmates, they don't have any problem believing that because they live. They live with the consequences of sin. What they have trouble believing instead is that they are made in the image and likeness of God, that they were created beautiful, that they are loved by God. There's something worthy and precious in each one of them. They have trouble believing that. He shares, the pastor shares with them how whereas everyone else in their lives had told them about how, how worthless, how stupid, how, what a failure they are, Jesus instead tries to raise up those who are bowed down. He tries to help those who um, can't see any good in themselves. So one night, Mark thought to himself, Jesus, in that tomb, killed and locked away. And yet, he rose from the dead. So he thought to himself, wow, if God can do that with Jesus, maybe God can do something for me as well. In my own tomb, maybe it's not the tomb in Jerusalem, but in prison, it's like a tomb. He's locked up. Then the second thought he had was, well, maybe God can do something with me also. So he turned and asked God for the help that he needed. And to his surprise, he, he said afterwards, wow, you know, time in prison, it's no longer just counting the days until he's set free. Now time in prison, it's a time that he can deepen his relationship with God, that he can learn to love, and serve his fellow inmates. That became for him a precious time. There's a story about a film producer, uh, C Cecile B. DeMille. He, he shared that one day he was out on the lake in Maine. He's out there just on a beautiful sunny afternoon, just doing reading out in that lake. And he noticed that besides him in the boat, there are uh, little water bugs. They're playing around. And one crawled up onto his boat, and it looked like it just died there. He didn't really pay a lot of attention to it. He continued with his reading. And about three hours later, he noticed that because of the, you know, hot sun, the bug, it looks like it dried up. But then something amazing came out of that bug. It was a dragonfly. A dragonfly came out of that water bug. And that dragonfly was so beautiful, so colorful, and it flew so fast away. And then he thought to himself, well, if God can do that out of a water bug, God can certainly do resurrection for us. So, have you ever asked yourself, why did God create me? Why did God create me? You know, maybe we're not in a prison cell or in some sort of tomb, but are there things that hold us back, that weighs us down? You know, maybe it's sin. Maybe it's fear. Maybe it's guilt or shame. Are there things that holds us down. Mark said, no matter what it is, God is there, and he can help us, even in a place like hell that he found himself in. You know, Psalm 139 tells us that God, God will go to hell 
to save us. We profess that in the Apostles' Creed, don't we? We say, Jesus was crucified, he was died and buried, and he descended into hell. Did you ever ask that question, what, Jesus went to hell? Jesus went to hell? So we believe Good Friday, when Jesus died, Jesus went to the place of the dead, Sheol, also referred to as hell. Why did Jesus go to hell? Not because for his punishment, but Jesus went to hell to bring with him all those who have died, to raise him up with him so that he can lead them to heaven. Jesus would go all the way to hell to save us. So if you find yourself in a tomb, in some sort of prison, whether it's a physical prison, whether it's sickness, whether it's mental anguish, whatever, God will come to save us, and we can turn to him. God wants to free us so that we can be everything that we can be. All we need to do is invite him into our lives and give him permission to do, to show us what we need. The prison ch chaplain shared another story of Christy. Christy said, my daddy called me ugly every day. My boyfriends treated me even worse. But I've never been told that I can be anything more. Then she asked the pastor, do you really think I could be a child of God? Could God make me like new, like Eve before she sinned? The pastor answered Christy, yes, Christy, yes. That's the story of the gospel. That's the story of the dragonfly and the story of Easter. God wants to set us free. God wants to free us from our tombs that we can rise and become everything that we were meant to be. And that's the story of Easter. Amen? Amen. You know, at every Easter, we have the opportunity to renew our faith. And I hope you as couples also do that in your own marriage, that you also renew your marriage vows. Maybe you haven't been the best spouse. Maybe you've done things that you regretted. But in renewing your vows, basically you're saying to each other, you know, I want to try better, honey. I want to do better. Please help me. Please, we want to live a better life. And so in a similar way, as we renew our profession of faith, we're not saying we're perfect. We're not saying that we won't ever sin again. But what we are saying is, God, I want to try. I want to be, tr I want to be a better person. I want your help. I want to turn from sin. But you know, when you turn from sin, you're an enemy of Satan. So it takes courage, right? It takes courage to say no to Satan and so yes to God. So if you're ready and you don't have to do this, nobody has to renew their marriage vows, 
nobody has to renew their faith. But if you want, I invite you to stand and to renew, renounce sin and to reprofess your faith. So if you're ready, I invite you to stand. And if you do this, realize we're not perfect, but at least our intention, do it with sincerity and do it with boldness. Don't be half-hearted. Commit yourself and say, I do boldly. Okay? So I ask you, do you renounce sin so as to live in the freedom of the children of God? Do you renounce the lure of evil so that sin may have no mastery over you? Do you reject Satan, the author and prince of sin? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace, Protect us from the evil one in Christ Jesus, our Lord. So right now, um, we're going to come down with holy water. And just as at our baptism, we were washed with the water to be made clean. So we also use this holy water to renew us, but also to wash us clean.
we continue now with our petitions. Heavenly Father, to the death and resurrection of your Son, we have been given new life, and so in gratitude, place all our needs before you. For the Church, that her members bond with each other more closely for a deeper reverence for the Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our for all government officials, that they promote and defend the right to religious freedom and liberty of conscience for all, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those entering the Catholic Church as full members this Easter, that they use the gifts of the Holy Spirit to conform their lives fully to Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear For all catechists, including the parents of small children, that they convey in depth and liveliness of the richness of our riches of our faith. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those who are ill, especially Jojo Cinco and Tela Venko, that they be healed by the power of God's love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our For those who have died, especially Father Labib Kobi Kobti, Lucita Escobar, Bernardo Caranto, and Fridi Mirkovic, that they enter a new life in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. This Mass is being offered in thanksgiving for Magdala Wong. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our God of mercy, the power of this holy day drives away all evil, washes away all guilt, restores lost innocence, and brings joy to those who mourn. May we who celebrate the resurrection experience its power in our lives and in our world. We ask this. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 617, Come to the Water.
Pray then, my sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people, exalting your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. 
Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Salvatore, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As children of the one Father, with confidence we can turn and pray. Our Father. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Our communion song is number 342, I Am the Bread of Life. And I will be. 
the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger, and who believe in me shall not thirst. No one can come to me unless the Father beckons, and I will Let us pray. Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Uh, we have a few announcements. Please be seated. Our second collection this Sunday will be for the Catholic Relief Services. This is the U.S. Bishops Overseas Relief Fund. They support victims of war, not only in Ukraine and in Gaza, but people in need in 122 countries around the world. Thank you for your gift that will help them help others. Ushers, you may now take up the collection. The Boy Scouts is preparing a pancake breakfast for us this morning. You're all invited to join us. There will also be an Easter egg hunt sometime after breakfast, as well as arts and crafts down in the hall. All are welcome to come celebrate Easter with us. Good morning, I'm Tom Del Mundo. Um, I lead uh, the uh, 
St. Anne's Couples Relationship Enrichment Ministry. And it's, uh, I just wanted to say happy Easter to everybody. It's so great to see so many people, so many couples, so many families here for, for Easter. And of course, the core of the church is the family, and, and the core of every family is the couple uh, that started that family. And it's all too often that we forget that person that we fell in love with. And that's why St. Anne is sponsoring um, a, the date night challenge again this year. So what that is, is we want all the couples out there to join us. Take, a, take your, your, the most important person in your life out on a date. And we're going to make this easy on you. I've got, we've got flyers in the back of the church and also one at the bottom of the stairs for, at, um, at Moriarty Hall. Uh, there's a URL there along with a QR code. Sign up for the email list. We'll send you an email every month with three curated suggestions for a date that you can go on together. And some of them are absolutely free, um, so you don't have to splurge, or you can make it fancy if you want to. Uh, but we want to encourage you to all go on a date. All you have to do is go on your date together, reconnect, you know, just find out what's going on with that person you love, and take a photo and send it back to us. Just make sure that uh, you did it, and you'll be signed up. You, and we're going to draw uh, a winner from uh, all the uh, submitted uh, participants at the beginning of every month, and Father Dan is going to put to poll uh, a winner, or um, Father Peter, every month. So uh, please uh, sign up, go on a date, win a prize, as if going on a date wasn't prize enough. Thank you. Thanks, Tom. I'm very grateful that he runs this uh, marriage, um, what, what do we call it? We call it sacred, like sacred without the D. So St. Anne's Couples Relationship Enrichment Program. So it's a, uh, so sacre, I guess that's French for sacred. Um, so it's uh, as a way to help couples, uh, you know, deepen their relationship. Your, if your marriage is strong, then the family will be strong. So that's something that we want to encourage you to do. We want to thank our musicians for enriching our worship. And I don't see sister, but so, sister's always around somewhere doing something. You know, the environment that's so beautiful, it's always because, oh, there she is. She just kind of blends in with the woodwork. So thank you to sister and her team of... <laughs> And Matthew is the other person. He's our sacristan. He's always working behind the scenes. I'm always grateful. He gets up early to open up and turn on the heater and unlock the schoolyard so that I can sleep in late. So I'm very grateful for him. But also to our servers, our ministers, ushers. So thank you all for your ministry. Yay! But this day, most especially, like Easter Sunday, so the most important person to thank is really Christ our Lord, who conquered and freed us from guilt and sin. So to him, we give our thanks. Yay, Lord. Please stand. So we'll conclude this celebration to go downstairs for another celebration. So the Lord be with you. I think we could do better. The Lord be with you. I feel it. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. I think I did it wrong. Okay, can, let me try that again. It's Easter Sunday. I'm supposed to do this one. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Our closing song is number one seven five. Alleluia, Alleluia.